Hey everyone, I wanted to take a few minutes to share a brief devotional thought about John the Baptist. So this is coming from John chapter 3, verses 25 through 30, regarding the mission of John the Baptist and how we might be able to relate to that mission uh, and come in alignment and in agreement with the same focus and mission that John the Baptist had. So Verse 25 in John chapter 3 says an argument developed between John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said, Rabbi, that man who is with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this, John replied, a person can only receive what has been given to them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Messiah, but was sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, and it is now complete. He must become greater. I must become less. So the entire focus of John the Baptist's mission was to really reveal Jesus. And it was his delight. Scripture specifically says in verse 29, he says, I have fullness of joy as a friend who waits upon and attends the bridegroom. When the bridegroom arrives, the friend has tremendous joy because because the focus is not on the friend. The focus is on the groom. He says, so it it is his delight to decrease while Jesus increased. So the ministry of John the Baptist was all about the Messiah. It was all about Jesus. We see a tremendous amount of humility in his ministry. And I think our purpose, very similar to John the Baptist, is to represent Christ. And if we just break that word down into two syllables uh, or two parts, to re-present. Our purpose is to represent or re-present to the world Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 4 verse 19 says, My dear children, I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Paul speaking about the church. He says, I agonize. I'm in the pains of childbirth in my prayer, in my pursuit of of seeing Christ formed in you. So we see that the objective for every believer is that Jesus would be formed and manifested through that person. Now, how does that happen? Well, perhaps words and actions. You know, How would Jesus think? How would Jesus act? How would Jesus speak? Um, Jesus said in John chapter 14, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father. So Jesus was a perfect representation. He represented the Father to humanity by perfectly modeling who God was, being filled with the Holy Spirit, obeying the will of the Father, and only speaking His words and the actions that the Father had led Him to take to the world. So how do we follow Jesus' example? How do we follow Jesus' model? and say that which Jesus would say, and do that which Jesus would do, what might that look like today? Now, uh, the Walker family just got back from vacation, and I, everybody always asks you how vacation goes, and um, I'm sort of hesitant to respond to that, because for me, a lot of times, I get much less time with the Lord, and it's much less quality time with the Lord. And because of that, my my perception is that my mind and our focus is much more worldly rather than spiritual. So I kind of like the daily routine that I have around the house on your own property, the discipline of that routine, and the allowance that it gives me to spend significant time with the Lord each day. So on vacation, I think one of the things that was convicting the most is that oftentimes we put on hold um, the regular. Um, 
practices that we have as a, as a, as a Christian family to prioritize a more worldly, self-centered schedule, so to speak. And this is especially true when we're around, you know, family, because we abstain from our normal routine in order to accommodate other family. But in doing so, you know, the conviction is what do they see? What do other people see of us? And I think one of the best ways to represent Christ in the world is to live a radical life. So radical dedication. Are you radically dedicated to Christ where you put him first and the world, even friends and family, see, you know, friends, family come to visit on, on uh, the weekend. I, I don't stay home. I go to church because Jesus is my priority. And that in and of itself communicates a tremendous amount of value to Christ when we are willing to prioritize him over family. Now, I'm guilty of doing the very opposite on vacation or on family trips. Because oftentimes, as I said, we will prioritize family and, and, and be willing to adjust our schedule accordingly at the expense of our normal routine in seeking Christ, less prayer, less time in the Word, uh, less time training our children, um, and our, you know, our disciplinary, our disciplined schedule is... Um, put on the back burner in order to prioritize family and, you know, vacation, a vacation schedule. So I would just encourage, I'm just encouraged as I read this, John the Baptist was all about Christ. His focus was on Christ. That was his mission. And he took great joy in decreasing while Jesus increased. And I think that we portray Christ to the world through radical service, radical love, radical kindness, radical compassion. Radical boldness, uh, radical generosity, radical prayer, radical dedication, as I said. And I think it needs to be radical because radical stands out. When we walk in radical love or radical kindness, even to those who offend us, who seek to harm us, to hurt us, you know, love your enemies. I think that really stands out to the world. People notice, people are watching, people see that, and it's impactful, it's influential with our community, our neighbors, our coworkers, and our family. So just an encouragement, John the Baptist, his focus was on Christ. That was his mission, to exalt Christ, to represent Christ to the world through his actions, through his words. We have been called to do the same. Paul said, I'm praying for you until Christ is formed in you. May we be empty. May we be surrendered to allow the Holy Spirit to form Christ in us. And may we represent Christ with radical words and radical actions to a world who's desperate to hear uh, and desperate to know the only source of salvation given to men by which they can be saved. All right, until next time.